Okay, so in this video, I'll talk about uh, how to teach yourself data science, right? Uh, uh, what is the learning path to land uh, uh, to that uh, to that data science job? Okay, so uh, you know, data science requires some basic math skills. Okay, so essentially, you should be good in terms of a uh, basic algebra, calculus, probability, statistics. Uh, you know, you need to know at least some basics of each of these topics. Okay. You may not really remember exactly that hey, uh, you know, uh, that limits of this entire thing is what and so on. You may not know that exactly in detail, but you do need to know at least some basics in, in these areas. Okay. Um, and then you need to learn a programming language. In general, uh, a programming language uh, which can help you code software end to end, you know, a full blown programming language. And then another one which is a little bit of a scripting kind of language. Very quickly you just write something and get done. Okay. So uh, t right now, what is trending and hot is Python. So essentially, you know, a lot of people have been sort of investing time in learning Python. Uh, a lot of libraries are being written in Python, uh, which makes life easier. So a lot of tools are available in Python. Okay. So so therefore, you know, I would recommend if you have, if you don't know Python, just go ahead learn Python. Okay. Uh, now, top Python libraries in 2018-19 for you know doing all these things. Well, uh, you know uh, these libraries have been the most popular ones. Essentially, TensorFlow is one of the most popular library. Okay, um, and uh, you know these are all data science, deep learning, machine learning libraries, right? Scikit-learn is the most popular machine library in Python, of course. Pandas is 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 a you know is a library which is used for basic data massaging. So data science is what you could call it. You know, Keras is yet another. Uh, a uh, very popular library for doing machine learning, deep learning, PyTorch for deep learning, MXNet for much deep learning, and again, NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, uh, and, and Bokeh, and so on for basic data sciences. Uh, Theano was an old library, now it's not so popular. It was an old library uh, which uh, basically was very useful uh, for deep learning. But now, you know, you would really find TensorFlow, uh, a lot of people sort of using TensorFlow in that sense. Okay, a lot of contributors and a lot of stars, so a lot of people actually uh, working on TensorFlow. So if you want to uh, excel in deep learning, you must know TensorFlow in that sense is, uh, as of now. Okay. So other skills that are required beyond typical technical depth is basically these things, right? And these are like soft skills, in, as, as I would call them. Uh, analytical thinking, critical thinking, you know, thinking in terms of uh, uh, reasoning, analyzing, um, or inferring things, or evaluating things quickly, interpreting, generating, uh, you know, so all of those analytical skills, uh, which can be in some senses summed up as an IQ in some senses, that, that is really required. Now, some of these you could develop, uh, while, while some of these basically are developed over time anyway. Okay, creative thinking surely is required. Uh, you know, as as a basic component of of uh, of, uh, of understanding, uh, you know, what all machine learning use cases can be powered up uh, thanks to the data that you have. For example, right, computational thinking, algorithmic thinking, uh, uh, pattern recognition, nurturing cognitive skills. You know, uh, basic analytics, number skills, memory perception, uh, design thinking when you are creating visualizations and so on. So all of those sets are also. Uh, you know, in some senses, good to have when you are doing when you uh, when you are on your path of machine learning and and AI ML kind of things, data science kind of things. Okay, so the core foundation uh, you you do need to have some sort of a, uh, you know data processing library that you know of. So in Python, pandas is the basic data processing library. So if you are uh, uh, if you don't know pandas but you are into Python, uh, sure do explore pandas. That's your first step towards learning data science in Python. Okay. Um, then uh, um, to be able to do any kind of uh, uh, deep learning, you would need TensorFlow. So you would need to know TensorFlow um, uh, and and uh, and basic maths, of course, right? So and then there are various kinds of libraries which we didn't talk about, uh, like Matplotlib and Bokeh for good visualizations, SciPy and NumPy for numeric computations, PyTorch, Keras, TensorFlow uh, for deep learning, or Scikit-Learn for for machine learning. Right? All those libraries are things that you should care for uh, if you are doing data science using Python. Okay. Now that's about what kind of things you should learn. But how do you learn them? Right. So you know here are a bunch of things that you should. Keep in mind when you want to start off with a career in data science. Okay, uh, you know if you have to, if you if you're moving into data science area, you want to first find a slot of time to basically learn. Okay, and that's the most difficult thing, by the way, to do. Okay, it's finding a slot of time, uh, a slot of time where you say that hey, you are going to invest in learning data science. 
Okay, uh, read. So read a lot because hey, learning happens by reading. So essentially, read a lot, not just from one source but from multiple sources. There are so many blogs. There's so much of content available online that you can read from multiple places. Okay, uh, mix up your learning avenues. Don't read from one source. Read from multiple places. Of course, consider one source for for deciding what to read. Okay, uh, since there is so much out there, it's difficult to decide what to read. But uh, you know, if you think of one source which gives you a good flow, use that flow and then find relevant content yourself by looking up you know by, by, by searching online on various platforms like Coursera, Quora, uh, Medium, TechCrunch, Kaggle, many many platforms where you can read things from. Okay, uh, Practice. So essentially reading up is not going to, it's going to help you, uh, you know, explain concepts, understand concepts but uh, uh, nothing better than practicing coding it up yourself. So R or Python whichever you like uh, you know basic Excel case studies from Kaggle you basically practice basically go to Kaggle look at various competitions um, you know uh, try to participate in them do many projects uh, by, uh, while, you, while you are on your process of learning. Okay. Participate. So join some data science meetups. So there are some offline meetups which also keep happening, which brings in this community aspect of learning in a group. Okay. So join some data science meetups. Join LinkedIn data science communities. Enter Kaggle competitions. Join peer groups which are uh, which are interested into 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 machine learning, deep learning kind of things. Right. So analytics with the Stack Exchange, Reddit. Many of these groups exist. Right. So uh, spend time interacting with people who are like-minded, who are interested into data science. Now to get a job, so once you have learned, when you have invested a lot of time and uh, effort into learning, if you need to get a, you know, you need to get a job. So to get a job, socialize or promote yourself. So build up your LinkedIn profile. Make sure it is up to date with what kind of, whatever kind of things you have learned and whatever experiences you have had. Right? Uh, talk about your GitHub profile. So essentially, if you have done these things nicely, you have built some basic mini projects, you could put them up on GitHub and basically, uh, you know, share your GitHub profile on social media or also put them as part of your CV, okay, your resume. So apply to small companies also. So not just try to apply to big companies, especially when you are a newbie and starting off in this field. So start applying to small companies, apply to startups, uh, write a good CV and with all the buzzwords into it. So, you know, many times uh, various HR folks sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, give you an interview call versus not give you an interview call, depending on whether your CV contained the keyword machine learning in it. Okay? So make sure that all your buzzwords are surely there in your CV. Okay? Uh, tune it to relevant data science projects. Uh, you know, if a company is into, let's say, healthcare domain. So then you know, uh, talk about some projects that you have done in healthcare. If the company is more about banking domain, talk about some data science kind of projects, uh, mini projects that you might have done on Kaggle and so on and um, upload it code for on GitHub related to banking and so on. So tune your, tune your CV um, based on um, the company that you're applying for, you know, um, uh, and, and, and then network at conferences, meetups. So if you go to meetups, you will find the people, some of them might be actually looking, up, looking for folks to join in their startups or in their companies as data science guys. Okay. So prepare for interviews, data science, algorithm, puzzles, coding, everything is required. In general, a data science guy is supposed to be a software engineer first. So therefore, also prepare for coding and puzzles and so on. So uh, when working as a data scientist, keep yourself updated. See, uh, you know, after you have gotten a job, great, uh, you're a data scientist now, but uh, you know, you can't relax. So this field is like evolving very fast. So you must keep yourself updated uh, by reading up more and more. Find opportunities where data can provide you better insights, right? And uh, therefore suggest to the business newer use cases, okay? Uh, frame problems correctly. So define them uh, very crisply, okay? Uh, decide tools for visualization and modeling. No one scripting and one coding language for sure, okay? So, uh, so you know, when you show these, uh, when, when you come up with various kinds of projects, make sure that you uh, participate in projects uh, which, where you feel that, you know, you can have good impact on, on the business, on the final business. Uh, remember, you know, um, uh, it's not about coding up the most complicated solution. It's about coming up with some data science uh, uh, solutions which can suit to the business, right? And uh, therefore, decide tools for visualization nicely so that you can tell data science stories nicely to your upper management and so on. Okay. Uh, selling data science products. So know your customer very well. Whom you are, you know, once you have built a product, you want to sell to the customers. Know your customer very well. Tell a story. So you can't sell product just by saying, "Hey, my product is like 80% accurate on something or 90% accurate and so on." Okay. Yeah, the customer should be convinced that they have an ROI, return on investing into your product. Okay. So tell a story. Tell them how basically the product helps solve what problem they have had. Right. Be able to communicate well. So you know, it's very important to communicate uh, what your software does. Um, very nicely uh, to the clients to be able to sell it, sell it nicely. Okay. 
Now, uh, but if you are, you know, so this is for various stages of your career path in data science. You know, if you are sort of uh, a newbie and uh, you want to learn data science, or when you want to get a job, or after you've gotten a job. Okay. Now, if you're basically in the first phase, you're a newbie and you want to learn data science, the idea is there is so much to do, but uh, and there's so much to read. What particular part do you read is the question. Okay. Is there a flow of topics? What topic to read on? Right. If I have to search on Coursera, what things should I search? Or on Quora, Medium, you know, great blogs, but hey, what do I, where do I start? Okay. And to do that, that is the reason basically why we have created uh, you know, uh, a very great portal, mlminds.com. Okay? So we have basically uh, designed a very nice flow of topics, you know, from basic ones to more complicated ones across various parts of AI, okay? across various subfields in AI, including machine learning. Okay? And uh, what we have tried to do is to uh, sort of uh, 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 is, is to sort of do them step by step. So essentially, uh, if you register on the course, you could basically uh, go through these topics in a step by step manner. And as I told you, you know, just don't depend on this course. You could actually uh, l listen to the videos which I've recorded about 200 hours of videos on this course. But you can also then search for these things on other kind of platforms like Quora and and so on and therefore improve your knowledge by learning from multiple multiple different portals right but that's it uh, you know to start you need a flow of topics where do you start right and for that the website mlminds.com is a good one okay.